Marhaban. In this video, we will walk through a relatively simple example of designing a combinational circuit from given objectives. A formal procedure for doing so is shown here. Step 1. Obtain the specs, or goals, for the circuit. Step 2. Define the inputs and outputs with symbols, and, preferably, an example use of what the symbols mean. Step 3. Derive the truth table. If we know the purpose of the circuit, then we should be able to define what the outputs should be for every combination of inputs. Step 4. Develop the simplified Boolean equation for each output. With three or four inputs, we will do this with Carnot maps. Step 5. Draw the logic circuit diagram. Lastly, step 6. Implement the circuit. During labs, we'll primarily do this physically with chips and wires. During lessons, we'll take advantage of a simulation software. Notice that steps 3 through 5 are simply converting between the various forms of logic, like we've done in prior videos. This suggests that the real design work is in the first couple steps. Once we fully understand what a circuit should do, it is merely a matter of following established patterns to bring the design to fruition. So let's try that with this example problem. Design a circuit that can convert between binary and gray code. Sounds straightforward, but we actually need a couple more specifics to clarify the goal. Pause the video and try to think of two important questions to ask. One question that will keep coming up is, how many bits? In this case, the requirement is three bits. The other big question here is, does the circuit need the capability to convert in either direction? We'll just go in one direction, given binary, convert it to gray code. Now that we know the specifications, we move on to step two, which is defining the input and output variables. You can use whatever symbols you want. Arbitrarily, I chose x, y, and z to represent the three input bits that represent a binary number, with x being the most significant bit. I also chose capital G, H, and I to represent the output gray code, with G being the MSB. Notice how specific I was in defining these variables, including the number of bits, the numeric form, and the ordering of significance. There are many ways someone can interpret a sequence of ones and zeros. We want to leave no ambiguity. Step three is to create a truth table that defines what each output should be for every possible input combination. Do you have three input gray code memorized? I certainly don't. So to obtain this table, I simply looked it up online. Step four is to derive the Boolean equation for each output variable based on the truth table. First up is capital G. Here I used a three input K map. Then each one from the G column in the truth table leads to a one on the K map. This results in a group of four and the very simple equation, G equals X. Next up is H. We again see four ones on the K map. Pause the video and see if you can identify the equation for H. My guess is that most of you came up with this top equation, h equals x prime y or x y prime. This is correct in SOP form. However, if we have the gate available, we will simplify our circuit significantly if we write the equation as h equals x exclusive or y. Take note of this pattern. When you see two product terms being ORed together that feature the same variables, and a prime that switches between the variables? This is the definition of exclusive OR. And the final output variable is I. Pause the video and see if you can identify its equation. I hope you paid attention to H. We see the same pattern here for I, but now using Y and Z. The best equation to use is I equals Y exclusive OR Z. Step five is to draw the logic circuit diagrams based on those equations. First, I show the circuit taken from the SOP equations. 
This is fine, but inefficient. Much cleaner is the circuit taken from the exclusive OR equations. Certainly, drawing it this way saves time, but even better is that it makes clearer the relationship between binary and gray code. The pattern goes like this. The most significant bit remains the same. Thus, X feeds directly to G. Then, each remaining gray bit comes from the exclusive ORing of the aligned and previous binary bit. This pattern holds for converting from binary to gray code for any number of bits. As the final step, I implemented the circuit in a simulator. To verify the operation, I will put the truth table next to the circuit. Then I walk through row by row. In the first row, the inputs are 0, 0, 0, and this produces an output of 0, 0, 0. This matches the table. On the second row, 0, 0, 1 leads to 0, 0, 1. Again, a match. For full verification, I must test every row. I won't show that here for the sake of time, but I will end with the last row. 1, 1, 1 leads to 1, 0, 0. There we have it, a circuit that we designed from scratch to accomplish a goal. It is pretty neat that this device now exists because of the work we put in.